Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Gustavo Tolosa and I am a plant-based webinar host and producer as well as a professional musician. For the past seven years, I have worked with several doctors and chefs in the plant-based world and I have interviewed just about every influential figure. Today, I am happy to interview someone with an amazing story and with a passion for helping others regain their health by adopting a plant-based diet. Her name is Catherine Lawrence, and she is the owner of foodsavedme.com, online nutrition and cooking classes. She also teaches the Food for Life program with Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and for several years taught Dr. Campbell's online nutrition program with E. Cornell. She has a physical teaching and demonstration kitchen in South Lake, Texas, which is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of North Texas. She has taught over 8,000 students since 2008, and it is my pleasure to introduce you today to Catherine Lawrence. Welcome, Catherine. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Gustavo, for having me on. Well, thank you for making the time to talk to me today and to have this conversation so that people get to know you a little better. You know, people really need to hear your story. So let's get started with some questions that our viewers have submitted. How about okay. that? Sounds good. Okay. Have you always eaten this way, the way you eat now? Or did you grow up, like many other people, uh, eating the standard American, American diet, which uh, we call the SAD diet? Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the questions that people want to know. I wish I had eaten this way my whole life. I could have avoided some trouble, probably. <laughs> but no, I'm from South Louisiana. I'm a Cajun. I grew up on rich Cajun food, lots and lots of butter and seafood and pork fat and all that kind of stuff. So I uh, grew up on a very traditional Southern diet. Uh, so, Catherine, what it would, how would you describe your relationship with food right now? Right now, my relationship with food is is very good. I love food. I'm passionate about it. I think I always have been, um, but I'm in a much healthier place with it. I used to, I used to be a food addict. I think that's a safe <laughs> term for me to describe myself. Uh, so now, teaching others about food um, holds me accountable and keeps me inspired daily. Okay, so now. Before you started foodsavedme.com, uh, what type of work were you doing? Because I heard that you were in the uh, Air Force at one time. Is that right? Yes. I was in the Air Force for five years. I served um, over in Iraq at the beginning of the war. And then my degree is in aerospace engineering. So I, after I was in the Air Force, uh, that's how I ended up in Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, working for a Bell helicopter here. Wow, what a difference <laughs> uh, in uh, in your experiences. That's great. So, um, Catherine, you had several severe, or or I don't know if to say you will tell us if it was several or a few uh, severe health challenges. And um, can you tell us what they were and how did you come across eventually to a plant based diet? Sure. I, so my transition was a little bit abrupt. Um, my diet when I was working uh, in engineering was uh, what I grew up eating and what I was eating in the military. Um, very high fat, a lot of animal products, a lot of hormones and things like that. Um, and when I was 27, I, I got very ill. And um, I was actually at home on short-term disability. I had stage four endometriosis and ovarian cysts and uterine cysts. My entire reproductive system actually shut down. My case was very aggressive. My endometriosis had wrapped around my colon and a couple of my digestive organs. And so it was creating um, a lot of pain uh, whenever I ate and my food was trying to process. So um, throughout this process, I was obviously having a lot of pain and um, the doctors told me that I was too high risk for endometrial cancer. So I needed to have a full hysterectomy. 
And I was concerned like, well, I'm, you know, I, I might want to have children. They said, no, it, it doesn't matter anyway, because you're completely infertile. You won't be able to have children anyway. All right. And so at that point, uh, something must have happened that w w did, did you decide that you were going to try to do the surgery or did you how did you come across uh, the plant based option? Well, I um, something happened. Some things happened in my doctor's life where this um, procedure got delayed, and uh, my mom was really instrumental in this. She's she really wanted grandchildren, so she was searching, and I ended up um, working with a nutritionist, and she taught me about which foods are beneficial for a woman's reproductive system and which ones are maybe not so good. And and that began my transition to a whole food plant based diet. So did you so did you have a, a lot of help? I mean, or did you have to to did you get some books or did you do trial and error? You tried different things. How, how did all that process you know, develop? Well, I didn't do very well uh, in the beginning with it. For example, I had never had brown rice before. I'd only ever had white rice on my regular diet. And so I my diet was very, very simple when I transitioned. I ate just a lot of piles, I would say. I would have some brown rice, some beans, and maybe some broccoli, you know, all the time because um, I, I just wasn't exposed to this way of eating. So eventually I found resources online. I found groups in my community. Um, and then I found um, Physicians Committee and the Cancer Project and went to some classes and learned from them. I'll say back in 2006 when this happened, there just weren't a lot of resources available in my community like there are now. Now I feel like it's so much easier to transition your diet than it was back then. So I'm, I'm grateful to see this, this growth. <laughs> Yeah, yes, definitely. It has, it has grown so much and I am so yeah. thankful for that as well. Um, well, people like you and like me and like many others who really are trying to get the word out there and, and so many doctors that, that have that have transitioned as well is helping. So, Catherine, um, at some point then you must have gone back to the doctor's office and seen your doctor and uh, then what, what happened, Have, has, had it improved? And um, what was the doctor's reaction? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I noticed that my pain was different, but I didn't really give this diet, uh, this diet change a lot of credibility. And so I still went in for the procedure and the doctor woke me up fairly quickly afterwards and he said, he said about 95% of my endometriosis was gone. I had considerable scarring and I had an adhesion around my colon he had to remove. But he said, I have never seen anything like this. This must be a miracle. And my mom jumped in. She said, oh, she's been trying this, you know, new weird diet. And uh, and the doctor said, no, I'm sure that's not it. This must be a miracle. Um, and he said, so I didn't feel comfortable doing the hysterectomy. Let's just wait and see what happens. I just find it. I mean, I'm funny. It's not the word funny, but it's it very interesting how a doctor would be, you know, uh, just just uh, not want to accept that maybe maybe the what we put in our bodies has an impact in our health. It's just better to say, oh, it, it was a miracle. Yeah. Well, miracle. the miracle was the food that you were. Eating. Absolutely. And I remember thinking when he said that, like a little bit. Um, not maybe disappointed. I think that's a strong word, but I thought, oh my gosh, I don't really know how to eat this way. And this means I'm going to have to, you know, <laughs> continue eating this way. So I really need to get serious and figure out some good recipes. But it's such a shame when that happens because most people go to their doctor for nutrition advice and, and for someone in that community to say, there's no cure for this. Food has nothing to do with it. You know, the science indicates otherwise, but that's not readily available. And, and I wasn't even aware of the science at the time. And, and it turns out there's a ton of it out there. Uh, people just don't know. I think it's a story that a lot of us identify with because mm -hmm. we switch. I mean, it happened to me. I also lost about seventy plus pounds, and oh, wow. and I and I and I had health issues, and they all went away. And when I went to the doctor, he was like, "What are you? Uh, wow, what are you doing?" So, well, I'm 
um, just I switched the way of eating. At that point, he was like, okay, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Okay, I'll see you next time. It's like, right? you know, no, don't want to hear about it. Uh, but well, Catherine, so besides the, the benefits that you receive from switching uh, to this way of eating for your reproductive system, did you see, did you feel any other benefits besides that? I did. So it took about six months to completely heal my reproductive system. And those problems haven't come back, thank goodness. Um, but I noticed other changes. I actually, over that six months, I lost about 55 pounds. I got down to a healthy weight, which was great because I eat a lot. And I hadn't adjusted my portions or anything like that. So it was nice to, to get down to a healthy weight. Um, also, my cholesterol dropped um, down to a healthy level. My blood pressure dropped. And the thing that really caught me, I had seven fibroid cysts in my breasts uh, since I was a teenager. And I thought, oh, this is this is just something Robinette women have, right? Because my mother, my cousin, my grandmother, we all have these issues. And after about six months or so, those cysts completely dissolved. And I was shocked. I think that was the moment when I finally accepted this is the diet that my body functions the best on. And from there, I continued to see benefits. I started to get new hair growth at 27. I mean, that, and I still have little hairs sticking up coming in. And that's, that's unheard of for a woman at my age. This is when your hair typically will start to thin and mine is just getting thicker and I'm growing new stuff. So, so I, there are a lot of wonderful changes that came along with it. Tell, me, tell us a little bit about, well, you went on to have kids and we want to hear more about that. And then another issue that women have, the PMS, how did, how did all this uh, uh, new nutrition, how did it all affect you? Well, the PMS was something surprising to me and that I didn't understand for quite a while until I started studying nutrition. But my PMS was horrible before I had really heavy cycles, a lot of pain and cramps. I had been to the ER a couple of times during mine. And so um, that changed after, yeah, after several months. I remember when I first noticed it, my dad said, you're a lot less psycho than you used to be. And I was like, what does he mean? <laughs> and later I learned about fiber, removing excess hormones, <laughs> things like that. So that makes sense. But, but ever since this change, I have had no PMS symptoms. I have no back pain or cramps or irritability. I don't even cry. Like it just comes, you know, same day of the month and it's just a normal thing. It's not um, an inconvenience. It doesn't, you know, I don't have to change my attitude or anything like that. So that's been just another blessing from it. Um, the biggest, most remarkable change is that I was able to go on and have children naturally, naturally. I didn't need any extra things to help me do that. And I went on to have uh, three boys and they were all whole food, plant-based pregnancies. And the boys have been raised that way, um, eating this way. And they're, they're strong and thriving and smart. And they're just kind of a daily reminder um, of why I do this. And, and how important that one conversation was uh, with the nutritionist and, you know, what a gift that was that I was open to the information at that point. Truly, because and I think this is very unusual that someone would come across uh, a nutritionist that, that has uh, this philosophy of, of eating. So mm -hmm. you, you were one of the lucky ones. And likewise. Yes. She was um, she was vegan macrobiotic. So my journey actually started with a macrobiotic okay. flair to it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, all right. Well, I also know that you have worked a lot with the PCRM and with the E Cornell. And just tell us how that developed. That sounds to me very interesting. Uh, if, which one came first, or how you came across, and what you did with that? Just tell us a little bit. Sure. As I was experiencing all this healing, I, you know, would come in contact with other women who had been through the same thing, who didn't know they had options. And the news did a story on veterans and what they were doing. And I just got this outpouring of emails from women. And it made me so sad that the information wasn't out there. So I decided one day to leave engineering and go to school for nutrition. And so in 2009, I started teaching for Physicians Committee for their Food for Life program and was the I've been the instructor in Texas ever since then and I love doing these 
in office cooking classes where I can talk to people about nutrition, but then cook a meal for them. And that eventually led to getting connected with Dr. T. Colin Campbell. And I became a teacher of the, his eCornell program, which is fabulous, where you can get a certificate in plant-based nutrition. So I taught that for several years. I will say the most encouraging thing from my experience um, working with Dr. Campbell was our first question of the class, we asked people, why are you here? And, and the doctors, the common answer was, I'm here because my patients are asking questions that I can't answer. And I just thought that's so encouraging that there are physicians and nurses out there wanting to get this information so they can share it with their patients. Dr. Campbell's program is wonderful. What are some of the big takeaways that came from you teaching the Cornell program? I think it was the journey with the students. You know, when you don't have a nutrition education or nutrition background, you're kind of subject to the nutrition messages that are in the media. And certain studies can be inflated, certain studies are maybe not legit. And so it gives a very confusing picture of what's good. You know, one day, an egg is good in the media, and then the next day, eggs are bad. And so what was nice with this program is that you learn the science behind it. You know, when I when I eat a piece of broccoli, the same thing happens. It's not sometimes this is gonna happen, and sometimes, you know, like it is appeared or presented in studies when they conflict against each other. So I think that was um, the best part for me, watching students as they transition through this six week program of understanding the science behind nutrition and what happens. So, so then we even have exercises of how to, um, how to examine research studies and, and determine if this is a good solid study in science that we would want to use, or if the conclusions were maybe misrepresented in the media. Uh, seeing students have that kind of light bulb moment was uh, very empowering, I felt like, and probably my favorite part of the job. Yes, it would be for me too, and having the science behind it. And what you said is it's key to all this because I see every day people so, so confused because yeah. how couldn't they be confused? There, a study today contradicts the one that comes tomorrow and, and nobody, yeah. I mean, regular people are not trained to, start, to, to read and, and figure out whether that was manipulated or not, and knowing how to read research is, um, well, if you like that, of course, uh, th that is very important. It is. When people get confused, they just quit. And they uh -huh. just go back to their old eating habits. So I've always said there's money to be made in confusing people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, if you, yeah. if you can get people confused, you, you can make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So um, tell us a little bit about working with Dr. Barnard, who I just admire. And he's uh, I'm just an amazing professional and a, and a human being at, at the PCRM. Um, how long have you been working with him? And also, I think he featured you in one of his books, right? Yeah, so I've been working with uh, Dr. Barnard for about 12 years now, and he is constantly inspiring, but I would say also the most humble man I've ever met. Um, I learned from him so much about his approach is so gentle. And I think that bringing the message of whole food, plant-based diet and, and through a message of disease prevention um, is so effective. I'm in a market here in North Texas. It's changed um, from what it was 15 years ago, but there's a lot of opposition and resistance to, to eating this way initially. I think there's less now, but um, Dr. Barnard has has a way of presenting it that that shows the health benefits for people and makes a very compelling argument about why we should consider diet change. And I love I love his gentle, non-aggressive approach there. 
Um, he did feature my story in The Cheese Trap, um, his book that came out a few years ago. And I still recommend it to people because that's what I hear from my students. They're like, I can give up everything except cheese. And I'm like, you need to read The Cheese Trap and this will tell you why we are, were or are all addicted to it. Um, but he has a new book coming out, uh, Your Body in Balance. And it's all about hormones. And that also feed, uh, features my story because my issues were all about estrogen overload, you know, exactly what you would expect from someone having a very low fiber, high fat, high estrogen filled diet. Um, and so that's, that's in his new book, um, Your Body in Balance. Right, right. Yeah, The Cheese Trap is just a brilliant book. Everybody should read it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So tell me, I think, I think somebody asked, what are some of the most common questions that you get from students who attend your uh, Food for Life classes? Well, uh, there are two that I get every single class, probably no matter which topic I'm teaching. If I'm talking about heart disease or cancer or Alzheimer's, um, I always get the questions of soy and oil. Why no oil and isn't soy bad? Isn't soy going to make my boys or my husband infertile? And isn't it toxic? And so so we have to address these, you know, again, myths that come out and, and things the way they're misconstrued sometimes in the media. So so those, I would say, are the two most common questions. All right, Catherine. So uh, an interesting question for you here. Uh, would you consider yourself a purist? Well, I consider myself a resource for my students. Um, I am not a strict purist, but I am in awe of those that are and that can be. Our focus here at Food Saved Me is to help meat eaters convert to a plant-based diet um, for the sake of preventing disease. And so um, we have to we have to take it in steps, right? Baby steps. Let's learn dairy alternatives and, and let's learn why meat may not be so good for us. And, and let's learn how to cook brown rice. You know, there are a lot of people who've never had brown rice. And so I try to make it very easy in the beginning lower the barriers and then encourage them to eat as pure as they possibly can but sometimes our classes will include some of those transition foods and foods that have sugar and maybe adding a little bit of salt to the recipes and and if that changes the landscape of the meals that their family eats and they're getting more fruits and vegetables and more beans then I think that's a really great first step so with our recipes that we present in our classes and at foodsaveme.com, we try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, we discuss transition foods and alternatives that might add more flavor, but mainly just try to be a resource and get people excited about the food. Because I found that if people like the taste of the food, then it doesn't feel like you're really changing your diet. You're just adding some recipes that are really delicious. Well, I, I totally agree with you. As you know, I've worked many years with Dr. McDougall, mm -hmm. and his main philosophy is I want people to eat the food. And if it yeah. takes a little bit of sugar or salt on the surface for, for them to eat it, then uh, that's okay. It's a transition, like you're saying, because I assume that not everybody that walks into your office or classroom says, okay, I'm tired of, of being sick and overweight. I will do whatever you say. I can, I will cut <laughs> off everything. You know, that would be the ideal client. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> but it's not. So sometimes, yeah. Uh, sometimes you do have to transition somebody from this horrendous uh, way of eating that they have. And you, if you cut off every little thing that they eat, you will lose them and it would be a shame. Absolutely. You know, and Dr. Barnard talks about this in PCRM's uh, cancer prevention class that the lazy French fry eating vegetarians still have a 60% lower risk of cancer. So anywhere we can add whole foods is best. All right, thank you very much for a very enlightening answer. I um, also suffer, I would consider myself a food a recovered food addict. And I want to ask you, are you, were you or are you a food addict? Uh, would you consider yourself a food addict? Uh, yes, absolutely. I absolutely. I 
I used to make decisions about my day based around my food. So I absolutely am. And and that's one of the classes that we offer on foodsaveme.com. It's it's food addiction 911 because because food addiction is urgent, honestly. And and I realized and I wanted to develop this class because so many women, you know, would talk to me about like, oh my gosh, I can't live without chocolate. I can't live without this and that and wine and cheese and I just thought <laughs> we all need help. And so this uh, this class is based off of my experience and and some tools that I've found that help me kind of tame that beast of food addiction. But it's, you know, fat, salt and sugar. Uh, that's what they're intended to do is is create that cycle. So I, I think that most people uh, struggle with that. Right. I, actually, I should have I should have said um, processed food addiction. And uh, I, I, would, I would think that I would think that you agree with that because no, nope, I don't think anybody's addicted to kale or to broccoli. So we're talking <laughs> about um, drug like foods, anything powder like sugar, salt, uh, flour, things like that. Would, mm -hmm. would, would you say that that's what people really are addicted to? Yes, a processed food, absolutely. I mean, we're all chasing that high. Processed foods tend to be much higher in fat, much higher in sodium, especially if they're frozen processed foods um, and sugars as well, a lot of refined grains. And, and it just gets us on this cycle where it's continuous and you just keep, need to keep feeding that. And so, yeah, actually, um, absolutely. And that's why I refer to what we teach as a whole food plant-based diet. There are still some vegan foods that are processed and, and full of things that can cause that stimulation and that addictive cycle. And so so I think bringing back people to whole foods and finding recipes that they like in that arena can really help battle that. All right. Thank you. We were talking a little while ago about this exciting event that is coming in April. Would you share with the with audience here what that is? Oh, sure. I would love to. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share about it. The Food as Medicine Summit is coming to Richardson. That's just north of the Dallas area. It's going to be a great two-day event. Uh, Dr. Neil Barnard is one of our key keynote speakers and Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. We also have Dr. Clapper coming and many amazing speakers. So it's just going to be information packed and we have a couple of tracks um, that people can go to hear lectures on so they can just hear the medical stuff as nutrition relates to disease and then if they're very interested in the exercise track they can go to that because that's always a big question right you know where do you get enough protein and how do I do this if I'm a bodybuilder or I want to work out so we have that track and then we have the cooking track where you can come see cooking demos as they relate to nutrition and there's just going to be something here for everybody. Okay, the website, if you want to check it out, see all the great speakers, is foodasmedicinesummittx.com. The event is in April on the 24th and 25th. We actually have a fundraiser on that Friday night where you can have an intimate evening with Dr. Neil Barnard, hear him speak. There are only 100 people coming to this. And so it's a great opportunity to be able to hear him talk more in depth and on a casual level and connect with him as well. So it should be a lot of fun. Oh, it does sound like a lot of fun and a lot of life-saving information. Talking about life-saving, tell us a little more about the sign that we see behind you, Food Saved Me, and also about all those wonderful pots and pans that you have there <laughs> that I want to have right now. <laughs> so Food Saved Me is a two-part business. Uh, we offer free nutrition and cooking classes to our community. Um, we've taught over 8,000 students since we opened five years ago. And we specialize in disease prevention um, in regards to nutrition. So we have classes on cancer prevention, um, type 2 diabetes reversal and prevention, heart disease reversal and prevention, 
Alzheimer's prevention, food addiction 911, and the list goes on. And all of these classes are free. It's a service we provide to the community. But we've gotten so many requests from people who are out of the area and can't make it to the classes, or um, maybe the class, the, most of the classes fill up, so it's hard to get in. So we've decided to move our classes to foodsaveme.com. So that way, no one is prohibited from hearing this information because I have seen how it changes lives. Um, as far as the cookware pictured behind me, the second part of our business, Food Save Me, is a Salad Master dealership. Salad Master, in my opinion, is the highest quality cookware that is available in the market. So many of us are, are looking for food and how important that is, and it's so important, but we're not considering that cooking surface that the food is being cooked in. And in my case, the cooking surface that I was using prior to using Salad Master was adding chemicals and plastics and heavy metals to my body. And if you think about my reproductive system, that's not good. Those are not things I wanted in my body when I was trying to clean it out. And so we have a Salad Master dealership here. We have about 22 chefs who do the cooking demonstrations. It's not something where you could just walk in and, and buy some pots and pans or anything like that. It's done in, by private demonstration, by appointment. My husband and I do those. We do them together a lot and it's a lot of fun. What I love about it, besides the clean cooking service, is it's just so fast and easy. Um, the biggest objection I hear during our nutrition classes for people changing their diet is their concern like, I don't have time. I don't have time to cut all of this and prep all this and cook all of that. And so with the Salad Master food processor and some of the things that people can get free by seeing a demonstration, that just takes that um, barrier down completely and just makes it so much easier for people to get more whole foods into their diet. So that is why I'm involved with Salad Master. I just love the company. The reason, uh, well, the person who introduced me to it was that nutritionist actually. Uh, before she would take me on as a client, to uh, learn about food, she made me see the Salad Master demonstration. And I was skeptical, I'm an engineer, I'm a natural skeptic, but I learned so much about nutrient retention that I need to be cooking at low temperature so I can preserve all of these nutrients in my food. I need those cancer fighting phytochemicals and things. I learned about cooking without water. I learned about toxicity in cookware. And so I became an owner of the Salad Master set um, 15 years ago and I've been cooking with it for a long time and about five years ago decided to open a dealership. And it's just been a wonderful thing for our community, teaching people about cooking methods and the cooking surface. But what also it's enabled is for us to provide all of these free nutrition classes. And it's just a lot of fun to be here at Food Save Me. I hope if anyone listening is ever in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that you'll stop by and say hi. Oh, it is. I was I, I was lucky to be there, and it's uh, it's like a mini Disneyland for people that like to cook <laughs> like this. I love it. It's like, and I want to reiterate. I want to confirm that that the classes that are held there at location they are free. People don't pay for that, and then the classes that are online on your website foodsaveme.com, you have some that are free and then you have some that are paid, but they still have a, it's a very low fee accessible to, to everyone. Is that correct what I've just heard you say? Yes, absolutely. Every class that we have, we like to have a free version of it so someone can still get the tidbits and we try to keep the cost of the classes on foodsaveme.com very low so that everyone can get the information. And something that's a little bit different about our online classes, we've created beautiful handouts with recipes, nutrition information, and tips. So it's a continuing resource. The person can really focus on watching the class without having to you know, pause and write a bunch of notes. It's all written out for them. And I hope that that'll be a really helpful tool for people. Oh, I know. I know it will. It will become very, very popular and I will recommend it to everyone. Um, what, what else could we expect from foodsafeme.com in the near future or in the faraway future, in the future? <laughs> 
Well, we have a lot of classes in development. I am experimenting with some things I've become passionate about. So one of them, we're going to have a, a vegan or a, a whole foods uh, plant-based class that's all Cajun recipes that I grew up on. So that's going to be fun. Um, another class that we're working on filming right now is foods that boost the endocannabinoid system. And, and if you're familiar with CBD, it's all the rage right now. Well, there are actually foods that can activate that and boost our immunity and mimic the effects of CBD. Or if someone is taking CBD, it can, can boost the effectiveness of it. And um, another class that we have in process is diet and dermatology. A good friend of mine, Dr. Renata Jaffe, is a whole food plant-based, and she gives an amazing presentation on how foods can affect skin cancer, psoriasis, eczema, aging, which is something we all want to slow down, and, um, and then acne as well. And so that's going to be, I think, a really exciting and popular class. Yes, I think you should call it age reversal class. Age reversal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would Everybody be very popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's good news in that. You know, all of these same foods that help us prevent, you know, these big diseases also slow the aging process. There are right. so many other benefits, you know, and I, I think yeah. it's important for people to know. You have talked a lot about disease prevention and even reversion. And um, but, you know, a lot of us, including you, I imagine, are very, very busy people. And so we uh, struggle sometimes with how to make it work during the week um, because we don't have time to cook every single breakfast and every single lunch and dinner and, and snack. So how do you make it work and do you have something that can help us? Absolutely. So this that has been a journey for me. What does a meal look like without meat on the plate? You know, that's a big transition. And so we've actually created a class. It's four parts right now. And I imagine that we will just continue adding to it. It's my strategy for how I make this work. It's it's me in the kitchen for under an hour making seven recipes. And I show you I give you my strategy where you can say, okay, I need, I need a cooked green, I need a raw green, I need a cooked vegetable, some beans, and, and we go through this whole seven part strategy and, and what we should ha have in our fridge for the week. And then we can combine these and have them this way. So that way it's not like, well, the meal prep that I originally started doing, when I it was a a little container, and then there's five things that are exactly the same. So I'm having the same dinner every week, every night of that week, and then I'm having the same lunch. And I thought, oh my gosh, there's gotta be a better way. So that's what I cover in the meal prep classes. They're really fast, really fun, and I think it'll change the way you kind of put your meals together and approach, um, approach preparing for the week. I think it's all about preparation, and it needs to be in a short time. So that's what we cover. Well, I've seen them and uh, they are just so practical and helpful. Okay. So I think people yeah. will really enjoy them. Well, I want to thank you again um, for making the time and thank you for sharing this information with us. And we'll make sure that we visit your website at foodsafeme.com. And I hope to see you soon in another webinar. Me too. Thank you so much for your time today, Gustavo. I really, you know, this is a work of my heart. It's my life's work. And I, I would really love to hear from students after they see the videos. I want to hear the success stories because I get all of those from our in-person classes. Right. And that's something that um, I'm just really excited about. I hope these recipes help people and, and make their lives easier. So thank you so much. All right. We'll see you later. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.